Well, we want to welcome you back for a fourth response to your comments and, and questions uh, in regards to the survey that uh, was made available to you about drawing with colored pencils. And uh, I'll let Jeremy go ahead and describe some of the things that maybe we can still cover, maybe just fill in a couple cracks and, and make it even uh, more of a possibility for you to you know, enter into the world of colored pencils. It's a fun place to go. Thank you all for joining us for this fourth video, this bonus video. You know, honestly, three videos is just not enough time to cover such a, a broad and exciting topic as colored pencil portraits. And frankly, four videos isn't either, but we're gonna give it a try with this one. Um, and just as a quick recap, you'll remember that in the first video, we talked about drawing realistic skin textures. And, uh, and then in the second video, we talked about boosting realism, you know, adding that depth and dimension that really upped the wow factor in your drawings. Then in the third video, we talked about the quality of coverage and how to knock out those white gaps that shine through and, and how to, uh, to kill the wax bloom that sometimes builds up and creates that ugly film on your drawings. So in today's video, we're going to go kind of back to the basics. We had so many questions from you in the survey that were just uh, you know, simple questions. How do I get started on the right foot? Uh, what's my first step? How do I, how do I go from you know, never drawing with colored pencils to drawing portraits? And uh, so, Daryl, today I, I want to talk basics. And uh, the first question we have from, from our survey takers is, um, you know, what makes a good colored pencil portrait subject? What's something you need to look for? Well, I think that many of the things are very similar to drawing uh, something that's going to be a black and white uh, uh, rendering. Uh, I would want to have something as sharp and clear as I can. I always like to pick something that is going to express something, but not too complicated. You can you can look at your subject and say, is this going to really translate well? It's amazing. You can have little things that are kind of odd in a photograph, if you're using a reference, and they just don't translate well. It, it maybe adds to some distortion or, you know, almost making somebody almost look deformed because if you don't know a lot about sh foreshortening and know how to pull that off, which I always try to show you, uh, it can really uh, confuse uh, the issue. So I want something that has a nice composition and design, uh, you know, that's arranged well and not in some very odd pose. I'd like to have something that isn't just a straight on, almost like a school picture, but something that has a little personality. It's always good to really try to capture that person that you either care about or somebody else does that you're doing it for. And, uh, and something that, uh, you know, has good clarity between uh, the different colors. Um, there's some naturally they're going to be more challenging than others. But anyway, just clarity, just being able to read well and express as many of the things as you can simply. And uh, something that somebody's going to enjoy looking at. You're going to spend some time drawing this, uh, you know, when you start a project. And so you want to be able to feel comfortable about it, too. So I've I've come across times where people drew somebody that he really didn't like. Well, that's not a good start. So that's the difference between drawing a, a woman drawing her baby or her grandchild or uh, something along that line, just a completely opposite end of the spectrum. So you want to find something about that photograph that really captures you and you think that if you can convey that, others will be captivated with it too. They'll be interested in what you've tried to draw. So, uh, you know, clarity, you don't want to have something that's so tiny that uh, you can hardly make out the features. Uh, with colored pencil, the more drawing you have to do, it's probably uh, not good because it doesn't come off the paper quite as well, especially if you don't have the color race. The color race gives you some wonderful opportunities to, you know, do some renovating, uh, you know, uh, change things, uh, you know, lighten up things much better than the waxier color pencils. But anyway, you still want to pick something where you don't have to do uh, too much uh, preliminary drawing. The next question, and I know you touched on this a little bit in in the previous question uh, with color race and everything, but but in your experience, what should be considered when you're choosing when you're choosing colored pencil drawing materials or supplies, what's some, what is something they should keep in mind as they search for the, the tools? Yeah, I, I like to be able to uh, pick out something that's going to hold up. Um, 
naturally, I think we uh, did this in the last uh, couple videos, where if we're not careful, we can have something become very, very coarse. Uh, and again, especially if you're drawing with something other than the color race, which allows you to have a lot smoother uh, tones and values. But we don't want to have something that is so uh, coarse like a watercolor paper. And this is what would happen if you were using um, you know, a, a waxier pencil, where you have this tremendous grain. And that's so easy to have happen if you have something very coarse. Uh, and, and if you're using the point of the pencil, you can refine that quite a bit. But still, if you're using the wax or your pencils, it just, it's just one of the things you have to start accepting. So you want some tooth, though. It's easy to start thinking, well, OK, then I'll just go to a, a smooth, like I'm using Bristol right here. It's one of my favorite papers. But there's a paper for everything. And, and it's easy to just not pay any attention and get something that's smooth. Well, the problem with smooth is these have a tendency to slide. Almost all your pencils will. Your graphite pencils do. And you need to have the texture, the tooth of the paper, to help you start uh, not only taking advantage of that texture when you want, it, when you want a, a specific texture. Here I am, the tooth of the paper to create a texture in your drawing. But you want it to... Uh, be able to hold up clear to the end. It's one of the things that I, I want to do uh, as much as I possibly can is make my tooth hold up so that I can uh, still have it adhere to the paper and, uh, and I can leave some color behind uh, on the paper surface as I, as I, well, let's just call it scrape the pencil across the surface. As I go across here, uh, that tooth helps it to be left on the paper, like so. Now, the the uh, I think I've already shown you, if I was using a color race, this uh, tooth becomes less and less of a factor because for whatever reason, the makeup, the hardness, uh, the the clumping uh, quality of a, a waxier pencil has a tendency to catch on those, uh, you know, high parts of the tooth and accumulate. It just kind of starts clumping. So you can see already that we have an opportunity, you know, to make something much more refined. Now, if if I had a chance to do this first and then put this over, that would subdue this because what is doing, what is making this so obvious is the white. It's very difficult to get the white filled in when you're using a waxy colored pencil. So uh, the paper is very important. So I wouldn't want to pick up a watercolor paper per se. And I also, if I have a preference, I, I like to have a, an illustration board. And there, there are many that I have never tried. Uh, there, here's, a, uh, here's a very inexpensive one that uh, I, I was able to just find at an art store. And uh, one side is the surface you would do, and the back, back side is blue. Um, and so there are, but there are many different companies. Uh, here's here's uh, Arch's version of a vellum kind of a surface and uh, it is they're considering it in a watercolor category I don't know maybe I can enlarge that a little bit so you can see uh, that gets blurry but anyway they consider it their watercolor uh, hot press and yet we wouldn't want something that's very very bumpy and having that real coarseness otherwise it's going to be very difficult you know to smooth that down one of my favorite ones is uh, the uh, uh, Strathmore. It's it's more expensive, but on the other hand, I if I foul up one side, I can turn it over and it's exactly the same because it's it's laminated. They have uh, a piece of paper on each side of a core, a cotton uh, core, and so it's 100% rag, and uh, I think it's deacidified. But anyway, Strathmore is. Uh, one of the papers that I love to work on for drawing, it's the 300 series uh, Bristol Vellum. And, and this is the 500 series uh, uh, illustration board. It comes in a, in a, a, a thinner, uh, let's see, lightweight regular surface and a, uh, and a heavyweight. And this happens to be the heavyweight. I like these because then if I want to use a wash or something underneath of it, uh, I don't have to worry so much about it bowing and bending. It can take, you know, some light uh, color. I mean, if you just soaked it in a bucket, you'd probably have it buckle on you. But uh, 
I like to be able to have that extra uh, sturdiness underneath the paper so that it kind of helps the texture, the tooth, last a little bit longer, be just a little more durable. And, uh, and yet then again, uh, just to pull this one in here, uh, these are, are things that you can do. You can do all kinds of mixed medias. You can do washes behind it. You can do... Uh, you know, even some Prismacolor over the top to bring out some, you know, specific lines and, and to accent things uh, when you're finished. And that's kind of fun to do, too. But uh, anyway, the materials, I think the board, naturally the, the uh, pencils, I, I, I just like these uh, for so many reasons. And yet there's many, many other colored pencils out there. And if you uh, are using something else, then we take into consideration... Uh, how lightly you're going to be drawing, uh, whether you're going to be doing uh, something with more texture or a little less texture or very little texture. And uh, these are all kind of interesting things to do. You, If you use the color ace, you can use your regular uh, kneaded eraser. I always like to form mine into a teardrop because I can pick out, you know, one little dot. I can go ahead and make a blade out of it and, and create a a, a hair, you know, see like I've just taken that right through there. Uh, so that's kind of a nice thing to do. You might want to have a, a Mono Zero eraser. They're wonderful. Uh, instead of having to have an electric eraser, these work often very well when you want to take a, a multiple stroke or, you know, be able to erase down to the paper. Uh, this will help you have some of those fine lines. But you can see I did quite well even with my kneaded eraser. I always like a brush. Again, I'm, I'm taking into consideration I'm working with something that is softer, like the Colorase. It's a drier uh, pigment uh, catalyst. And so I can go ahead and brush it just like I would graphite or smooth it out with a, a cotton swab or a piece of cotton. Uh, and yet this one, this won't do that. This is wax and it just stays on top. There are some solvents and things that you can use, I've mentioned in one of the other videos. But uh, those are some of the things. It's such a, I, I love the fact there's just not a whole lot of cost. Some uh, colored pencils, uh, you know, sets can get terribly expensive. Uh, you know, they have 160 uh, different colors or something. And so if you want to buy every single color, uh, I'm not sure that's very important. Uh, I like to get down to, you know, using a very few, uh, like on this one here, this 24 is way overkill, but it has some colors that the 12 doesn't have, the set of 12 doesn't have. And yet uh, for uh, a face and hair and things like that, I might only use four, five, six pencils. And it's the way I layer them that I can create my very own color. And, uh, and I know that some of these sets have uh, maybe more than one shade of skin tones, and so you don't have to mess with that. But I, I just, I, I kind of like to be able to do that. So, and I like to keep it as, as inexpensive for myself and everybody else as I possibly can. And, uh, and it's still a lot less than trying to buy a whole set of paints or, you know, all the canvases and everything else. So, uh, anyway, those are some of the things. Uh, uh, the erasers, you have a couple different options. Uh, might be good to get something that's a polymer. This one's pretty dirty. I'm embarrassed that I didn't clean it up first. But you might want to get something like this to color, to uh, help clean up maybe the outer parts if you left it white. And uh, and yet you have to be careful that you're not uh, smearing, you know, through something that's waxier and then transferring that into a different place because it can accumulate on your eraser. Um, and then, uh, you know, the brush, there's a couple of erasers, the... Uh, the paper or the illustration board, and wow, you're ready to go. Uh, and if you have a good uh, reference that's nice and clear and communicates something special instead of just doing, expecting your art to make a very mundane, you know, picture with no expression to all of a sudden become a masterpiece and interesting, uh, just take a little more time. Uh, maybe even tell somebody, no, I don't think I'll do that portrait for you. Uh, you're, you're, uh, your family reunion picture with somebody off in a dark corner of the room just isn't going to give me enough to work with. So be uh, be kind to yourself and them too uh, and do something that everybody's going to enjoy as much as possible. So those are just some things I think I'd think about. So My final question for you from the survey takers 
is how does starting a colored pencil portrait differ from starting one in graphite? I mean, I know there's some similarities, but can you highlight some of the differences? Well, I think that uh, a color pencil portrait is, uh, depending on how you start it, is not going to be done as easily by just starting to sketch your drawing out. Because the color, regardless of what uh, color pencil you're going to use, is not going to come off as easy as graphite does. And graphite can be difficult too. I, I, I'm just a... I'm just a real stickler for uh, don't uh, put too much pressure because I always like to make um, uh, changes. So the five pencil method teaches you how to, you know, limit your pressure, get the maximum out of your pencils uh, without having to uh, press too hard. And that comes from lingering and layering and, you know, using the appropriate pencil. In color pencils, you don't always have, you know, a darker value of the same color but there are other colors that you use. And if you start uh, practicing with color, you'll start recognizing some of those colors, especially if you have a doodle sheet and you have an opportunity to just layer colors. Maybe one color over the top of another one isn't the same as if you reversed it and put the other color first and the other one over the top. And, uh, and yet uh, these I like to use in transparent uh, ways so that I can build my color. But when you're starting a drawing, you want to make sure that you don't have to spend as much time uh, sketching unless that's going to become a part of your, uh, your work. I think in sketching, now what uh, colored pencil are you going to use? because it's better not to start with graphite, for instance, and then try to draw uh, you know, color over it, because, and, and because it's so much easier with graphite, it's, it's tempting to do that. But I would rather start my drawing with the actual colored pencil so that I can have uh, you know, some fresh colors. If you put the graphite down to create your, uh, your, your initial sketch or your layout, uh, then it's going to start uh, being carried into your colored pencil and it becomes, it just grays everything. It, it starts uh, killing the life of your drawing in many ways. And you can never go back down to the bare paper. So uh, with colored pencils, I like to start with the lighter colors that are within the category I'm looking at. If I'm drawing a face, I certainly don't want to use... Uh, uh, a brown, uh, you know, uh, to initiate my sketch because that brown is going to be left there. You you can't really cover it up and, and work over it with a lighter color. And so I also want to be able to use a, the opportunity to have a very light line. And so uh, let me go ahead and shift over to the paper again. And uh, if I am drawing a face, let's just say, let's just take this boy that I worked on recently. If I'm uh, trying to find uh, a color that's going to go into the hair, I might use this terracotta. Uh, I might use it one of the peach or skin tones or whatever. But I also don't want these to become so dark. I, I do the same thing with my graphite drawing, though. I don't like to commit myself too much because then I'll have this outline and or I can't make the changes as easily as I want. But I wouldn't want to use blue, let's say. I mean, just to be ridiculous about it, I wouldn't want to use blue. Or I wouldn't want to use, again, my, my graphite to draw this out. Or this is never going to go away and become the edge of an ear without becoming a color book line. This is never going to work when I have all these subtle little, you know, uh, skin tone features within the face. So what I, what I suggest you do, especially when you're learning, is to, uh, if you want to draw your, your, uh, your uh, subject out, uh, to uh, do it. Uh, maybe you could even do it in graphite on a separate piece. It sounds like a lot more work, and maybe it is a little bit, but it'll maybe save you some grief. And then see if you can transfer that over. You could uh, project something on so that you don't have to mess with it too much. You could trace something, you could transfer. Transferring would be, um, let's see if we can just do something like that quick. Um, this is uh, something you want to take in consideration that it's a compatible, erasable uh, product. So I, uh, going back to the 
uh, color race again, I, I can come in here and do a coverage on the back of the drawing and make sure that I'm going in all the places that I'm going to want to, uh, you know, uh, capture on my paper. And you basically make like a carbon that way. If it's on the back side, then you can come over here and you can now draw over your uh, uh, drawing in those in those places. And you may have a lot of color in the back on the back and you just draw and it's just like a, a carbon copy. And so you can come up with a, a little bit of an outline. Let's just go ahead and make our own here. Let's just see. Now there are, if it's a dry media, uh, there's some options. Uh, a Conti crayon even makes, uh, I'm not talking about the pencils. The pencils don't come off as easy as, you know, something like this, that is their sticks. Uh, and yet uh, you want to make sure you get a color that's going to work. This is a dark brown and boy, I'll tell you, that's exactly what would happen. It would become dark brown. But what you want to be able to do is create this using maybe the side of your pencil all over the back of your drawing where you think the drawing is. And then once you put this down, then you want to tape it. You want to tape this on or you know tape it to make it stay still because if you ever have you ever have a place you peek and you take this off and then you realize uh oh I didn't get all that and now it's impossible to reposition uh, it so it's good to have this taped and or if you don't want to tape anything and that's fine you make these tick marks you can make them very lightly, but just to make sure you can see them, I'm making them a little darker. And you can go on all four sides of a paper outside the perimeter of your drawing. And then when you take this off, you have the opportunity to position it right back where it was. And so you can come back in and you can put that right back where it was. Okay, let's just see what happens when we have this, this right here. Let's get the other side that's a little fresher. I'm using a bunch of scrap paper here. So let's take a harder pencil. I'm going to take my 4H that I can. Remember, I have my drawing on here. I'll make a funny face on here. And now if I want to transfer that, I'll make sure that I'm now going over my lines. And we'll see if we have transferred something. And we certainly have. I don't know whether you can see that or not. But you can, you can see that I've transferred that. And it works very good. One of these eyes was when I just scribbled it on there. The other one was when I went ahead and captured it uh, after deciding, OK, I'll show you how to do it. But this is something that can still be erased because I have it with a, a color race. And so I can still make adjustments. But I can have as few lines as I want to to transfer uh, through onto my actual working surface, the, the illustration board or the paper that I'm going to use. And, uh, and I can get a pretty good idea. I wouldn't go any darker than I have to. So I want to use, you know, that terracotta comes across as almost a flesh tone or, you know, just a little bit uh, more than that. Uh, if it's too light, you can experiment, but, uh, you know, the peach probably isn't going to be enough color. Uh, it's going to probably have to be something a little bit darker for you to see it. But look what a great start it gives you. And you can you can go through all the most important uh, features, and you can do as little or as much as you want to, and you can uh, draw the rest freehand, or you can get every detail you can possibly get just by making, again, a carbon on the back, your own very own carbon, and make sure it's covered good, and uh, and that's just one way, just one more. There's always there's always ways. I love to just kind of improvise. I like even going into a hardware store and saying, "Hey, you guys, I know you don't have anything like this, but can you uh, help me, uh, you know, figure out how would I go ahead and make uh, this or or find some substitute or something that will work?" And it's like that in art. You don't always have to have everything, and uh, what is it? What's the mother of invention, Jeremy? Um, necessity is the mother of invention. And so you'll be amazed at what you can, you can, uh, you know, figure out 
and it makes it kind of exciting. So uh, that's where you, even if you have a problem and you run into a very, uh, you know, like a big mistake, uh, that's a wonderful opportunity to learn. Never be afraid of making mistakes. Otherwise, you won't, uh, you won't go in there where uh, other people have feared to go and, and be able to say, you know what, I was able to figure it out and uh, accomplish it. So anyway, on and on. Uh, again, don't be afraid to, uh, I want you to be able to, if you're going to follow what I have, uh, what I can show you, then I'd like you to be able to enjoy learning how color pencil work works. So I don't feel bad about somebody, you know, projecting on or tracing wherever your, uh, your experience level is. Uh, go with that and have fun and gradually learn all the other things as you go along. You know, if you're a little intimidated about uh, marking up your paper and having it become uh, irreparable or something you can't erase, well then start fresh, you know, with one of these choices. And uh, I think you'll have a good time uh, creating it, bringing it to life. All those things we've talked about during the past few videos where we can create depth and contour and contrast and all those things. That's where you're really going to be able to uh, bring this alive. And it's just such a rewarding experience. I just love it. I really enjoy that sentiment, Daryl. You know, th this concept of just doing what you need to do to get started. I know that, you know, personally, sometimes I, I will, I'll not start something just because I feel like it needs to be perfect first. But I like the idea of you know, finding a method that works for you and getting started and just enjoying it and, and learn as you go. Yeah, I think proportion is always critical in anything you're ever doing. Uh, having good proportion and knowing how to uh, achieve that and maintain it uh, through your drawing, constantly be improving on your proportion. I think that is really good because no one wants an eye in the middle of the forehead and you can't explain why it's there. Uh, it's, it's really nice to be able to capture the person as they are and so there are so many wonderful ways that you can go ahead and avoid problems in that area. And I think proportion is something that uh, is the reason I love to be able to continue working uh, and changing and modifying because I don't see everything at the beginning. Sometimes I, I do a pretty good job, but sometimes I want to just keep tweaking it because I realize, how in the world did I do that? You know, how in the world did ang angle get like that as I turn my drawing around or I see it posted on the community or something? and suddenly realize, uh-oh, that doesn't look right. And uh, so anyway, sometimes we look at our drawing so long that uh, we don't see certain things too. So it's kind of nice to get away from it for a little while and come back, or it's good to have somebody else look at it with fresh eyes, if it's somebody you can trust. And uh, anyway, I think proportion is very key, but um, all those other things are good. Well, yeah, and it's like you said, you know, these are these are tools to help you get started, but they're also going to be teaching you as you go. You're going to start to learn to see shapes and angles, and it's kind of training your eye to uh, to be a better freehander and a better artist in general. So, well, Daryl, uh, that wraps up our time for this video. I uh, really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Oh, you're welcome. And uh, you know, thank you all for watching. We hope you uh, hope you learned something from this and kind of glean some tips and tricks that you can take back to your own personal studios. Yeah, and even with graphite, uh, you know, there's a reason I keep putting out videos and videos and videos because there's just little things that if if I've already shown you, I can remind you. Maybe you can see it and have it explained in different words. But there's 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 so much to learn, and I don't want you to be intimidated. Do what you can, and 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 just have that excitement about getting started with something. And I think that the colored pencil is a great opportunity for you to experience something new if you haven't done it already. And it starts introducing you to color and starts building your confidence about knowing what happens when I put this color with that one and, and uh, how do I keep them separate and how do I make them have an impact? And, how do I capture the lifelike thing and make, if I have to make some compromises, I can do that. But still, it comes across just communicating something very special. So uh, I hope you, I hope I have the opportunity to uh, work with you uh, and show you more about colored pencil. Uh, I've got a, uh, a series, a portrait series that's coming out here shortly. And uh, it's just always so exciting to see the results through all of you when you come back with what you have accomplished, uh, sometimes without ever realizing you could. And if I can do anything to encourage you, 
uh, this is a great opportunity for you to work right along with me and vice versa, me work along with you, even though it's on a video. Uh, so, and you can play it as many times as you want and uh, glad to be able to offer, you know, whatever experience I have to uh, give you a boost. So uh, it's sure good to share. Thanks. Oh, fantastic. And uh, yeah, that series you're talking about, Daryl, that really was a, a fascinating experience. It was pretty incredible. We spent uh, something over 20 classes together drawing that boy, uh, who we came to know as Charlie. And it was really just, it was awesome to see him come to life in, in vivid color on paper. And uh, it's an experience, uh, you know, we want to share with as many people as possible. And uh, like Daryl said, that series is going to be available here shortly. And, um, you know, as, an, as a special thank you for spending the time with us and watching these videos, we want to uh, offer a special discount to you for, for a limited time. And um, if you want to learn more about the discount, you want to learn more about the series, you can just follow the link that's going to pop up down there below the video. And uh, we encourage you to check out the website. There's, uh, there's some awesome pictures that the students drew, uh, actual pictures of Charlie there uh, from the Art Studio of Students as well as a summary and breakdown of what's involved in each class. And even uh, you'll even get to see some pictures for the Darryl, for, for, of Daryl's drawing from the class. And uh, just a lot of great information there. So if that's something you're interested in, give it a look. And um, again, thank you so much for your time. And we, we really appreciate you watching these videos and, and providing your feedback. Yeah, and the questions are endless. I, I, there's all kinds of things you might think to ask, and I'll do my very best to try to answer those as I can. I can't always uh, answer every question, but uh, thank you so much for your feedback. You just don't know how much that helps because the whole idea is to help you have more fun as you draw and you experience uh, art and express yourself. So we thank you. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, thank you again. And like I said, if you have any comments or feedback you'd like to leave, go ahead and leave it in the comment box below. You know, you know Open up. Let us know what you want to hear and uh, what you'd like to know. We can help you out as soon as we get a chance. So, Thank you again for joining us for this series of four videos. It was a lot of fun and uh, really hope you learned something. Take care. Bye.